So the pandemic has clearly highlighted the physical and mental toll of chronic workplace stress. A recent study by Infinite Potential found nearly 35 percent of people across 30 countries are experiencing burnout. That's up by more than 5 percent compared to 2020. The study also shows women and people aged 35 to 44 continue to report high levels of burnout. For more information, I want to bring in Ariana Huffington. She's the CEO and founder of Thrive Global. It's so good to see you, even though we're not in person. Uh, we have you here on the screen, so that's always great. Um, but I first want to start off, Ariana, by recognizing that in 2007, you had a, a frightening experience due to burnout and exhaustion. Um, if you could explain to our viewers what happened and what do you think led to that moment? Thank you, Jerika, and great to be with you. It was, you know, two years into my building, half post, uh, I was a divorced mother of two daughters, and I had bought into the collective delusion that in order to be super founder and super mom, I couldn't really afford to take care of myself. And that burnout, if you want, is the price I had to pay for success. So I collapsed, I hit my head on my desk, broke my cheekbone, and I was diagnosed with burnout. Now, mm. Jerika, 2007 was early for the word burnout. Mm -hmm. uh, we left the Huffington Post to launch Thrive Global in 2016. I made our mission to end the stress and burnout epidemic. In 2019, the World Health Organization acknowledged burnout as an occupational hazard. And now, as you said, COVID, has exasperated the situation, which predated COVID, but now it's front and center, and we're seeing companies across the board uh, addressing it because they also see the connection between burnout and stress mm -hmm. and productivity and business metric. And it's so crucial to have that balance. And I think when I when I heard 35 to 44, you know, that is that time when you're still sort of in hustle mode and you believe you have to get it all done. When you think about the moment that we're in, um, you know, still very much in this pandemic where people aren't quite back to work or they're working out, you know, working from home and getting burnout that way because there's no escape. Um, what advice do you have for those people uh, who are watching and are wondering what what needs to be sort of the wake-up call and how do you deal with that once you've identified that you're burnt out? So ideally, you need to address it before you are burnt out. But whether you're already burnt out or you want to prevent it, the key, and that's the work we're doing with hundreds of companies, is to add some micro steps in the course of your day that will interrupt the stress cycle. I mean, as you know, stress is unavoidable. There is no job that does not involve stress, but it's cumulative stress that's the killer. Mm -hmm. So if we can interrupt it during the day, whether it's with the 60 second uh, pauses to breathe or to mm. remind ourselves what we're grateful for or to walk around our desk, all these interruptions, believe it or not, according to the latest neuroscience, in 60 to 90 seconds, we can interrupt the stress cycle. So it's great to have well-being days and well-being weeks, but we also need to bring these interventions in the course of our day, in the middle of Zoom or Slack or Teams or whatever you are doing, and for companies to realize the intimate connection between well-being and mental resilience, productivity, retention, attrition, all the business metrics that they care for. Ariana Huffington, great advice and really tying it all together when you think about the companies, when you think about the people, and something as simple as being grateful, taking a deep breath. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much.